final battle. It is game 30 of the Philadelphia 2014 Netrunner Regional Championship Tournament. I am Scott, the host of the Geek Nights Podcast, one of two hosts of the Geek Nights Podcast. Listen to that. But watch this. On the left, Dan, the number three seed playing Andromeda. On the right, Jesse, the number two seed playing MBN, making news. If Dan wins this game, he is the champion. If Jesse wins this game, we play another game, and the winner of that game is the champion. This is an extremely exciting game of Netrunner, the likes of which you will not often see. I'm excited to show it to you. Also, you should know these two guys here in the finals, these two excellent Netrunner players, play with each other all the time. They know each other extremely well. They know what's in each other's decks. Right? This is basically like the me and Chris of Philadelphia that's happening here. Uh, nine cards for Andromeda. Holy crap. MBN. Five cards. What will happen? I see a sweeps week in the MBN hand. I see a sweeps week. No one's mulliganing. No mulligans. I don't see any. I mean, you got a sweeps week. You're not going to mulligan, right? Mentor draw. Getting his click counters out. Two sweeps. Two sweeps. 16 credits coming in for MBN. Holy crap. Holy crap. Double sweeps week opening against Andromeda. If only it was a triple sweeps week opening. If only. It would have been even more beautiful. 21 credits in turn one and a draw for the third click. What will Andromeda do? Yeah, that would be better. Uh, Count Siphon. Count Siphon. Oh! No! Oh! oh my god! Triple Siphon! <laughs> Just grabbing a fistful of dice there. Minus 15 credits for the court, plus 30 credits for the runner. In his excitement, in everyone's excitement. Oh my god. Insane. And he had, you wouldn't have had 15 credits to siphon if he didn't play those sweeps weeks. Holy shit. Holy shit. But here's the thing. Here is the thing. So first of all, in his excitement of doing that, he forgot to put the Desperado down first, which would have gotten him three more credits. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is that he uh, used his final click to run R&D and he forgot to discard one of the six cards in his hand and no one caught it. Cheating. <laughs> Cheating. <laughs> Not that it mattered. And the third thing, because these two play each other so often, uh, Dan knows that Jesse does not have closed accounts in his deck, right? Jesse, I think, even says, you know I don't have closed accounts. If he had played closed accounts on turn two, if he had it in his deck, if he had put it in during the tournament, that would have been the only way to make it more epic. Oh, you stole 15 to get 30? Closed accounts, boom. Now, those tags are still meaningful. Uh, the runner's deck does have a lot of resources in it, and he really can't play them uh, you can't play a Katie Jones, for example. It's just going to get trashed. Whew. Despite that credit swing, uh, there's no more account siphons left. So it's not really a concern unless the same old thing comes out, right? It's And he has to use the same old thing to turn he plays it because otherwise it can get trashed. Uh, but he does have an R&D interface in Desperado. He's hitting R&D now. But no points have been scored yet. This is still, you know, MBN's back at six credits, has ice on both servers, has a remote there, which could be Sansan San or Howard. Andromeda just has an RD interface and a Desperado and a million money, <laughs> but six tags. 
this game is not over. In fact, it still has quite a bit of time to go. You know, these are the second and third seeded players. Uh, if they lost because of just a few account siphons, uh, they would not have made it this far. They're excellent, excellent decks, excellent players. Let's see what happens. All right, a Draco on HQ. Boosting the trace, getting through, getting an NAPD. You got money for that. Take it. It is ridiculously late at night at this point when this game is taking place. Can you get over that two sweeps week followed by three account siphons? Holy crap. All right, he's not trashing the pad campaign. Uh, basically, because you know, he's got these 30 credits from the account siphons right away. He, the biggest early <laughs> credit swing you can possibly imagine. But here's the deal. Can't play Katie Jones. He can get money from Sure Gamble. He can get money from Desperado. He can get money from Dirty Laundry. But he can't play Katie Jones. He can't play other kinds of economy cards that are resources. Uh, he can't play Account Siphon again either. So once he spends these 30 credits, might be low in the credits. Uh, you know, his money could go down. So if MBN can tax him and uh, take away the criminal's cash, he, he's sort of out of ways to get more cash. And he, he's only scored an NAPD for his troubles. So... If that happens, he can start playing Sand Sands. They can't be trashed easily, and it could be bad. But right now, you play a Sand Sand, and it is gone. <laughs> it will be gone so fast. Eli, double click. Yeah, double click is worth it when you have an RD interface and a Desperado and a Data Sucker. Trash the Howard, and whatever that was can't be trashed, probably, or scored. Three account siphons, everybody. Turn one. Come on. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just think about that. <laughs> and look at where the game is now. Could you believe that this game is starting with those plays? <laughs> Woo! Only two points gone to the runner. MBN icing up. No breakers whatsoever on the corp side. I guess he can inside job, you know, over those, get an access if he really needs one. An inside job double click R&D is actually not the worst idea with a data sucker, Desperado, and R&D interface. Caduceus. There's just something about resin Caduceus and making news and boosting that trace. It just feels so good. I don't know what it is. It's just such a nasty ice if the runner doesn't have an efficient way to deal with it. And, you know, Mimic is really the only efficient way to deal with it. So it's like... If they have literally any other, almost any other Sentry Breakers, <laughs> you're just so happy with that card. I guess if they have a bunch of Link. If they have a bunch of Link, you're sad with that card. But who's playing a bunch of Link? Upgrade an R&D. Ooh. Ooh. It's probably an Ash. We've seen an Ash before. But at the same time, by playing that on R&D, are you signaling all the agendas are in there? I guess it's a good way to make the runner spend three more credits. Uh, you know, he's down to 15 f from having so many. Uh, 
you know, I don't know what was happening in the Philadelphia Netrunner scene at the time. I mean, clearly good things because they both made it to the finals, so they knew what they were doing. But, you know, closed accounts. You couldn't find room for one closed accounts. <laughs> Not even one. You know, if even if you have a if you have a closed accounts playing against a criminal, do you take money and leave yourself open to the siphon on turn one on purpose so that you can close the accounts if they don't remove the tags? Do you do that? I guess I guess no, because they could siphon once and remove the tags, and that's still bad. <laughs> Yog comes out even though there are no code gates on the board. I guess that was in case of code gate. I'm sure he's got some in his deck. Fairy that Caduceus. Boosting the trace on the Draco. He's using money. Accessing. Oh, three nothing. Mm. It's harder as running. Down to 12 credits. Clone chip comes out. The fairy could hop right back on the board. No problem. If necessary. So now that's interesting. Throwing out the Draco, even though it saves you a credit on installing a new ice, and even though the Draco is kind of weak. It is taxing there. It only costs you one more credit to make yeah. HQ three eyes deep. I guess he really wanted to have five credits here as opposed to four for some reason. And if the Draco's still even taxing a little bit, it costs you that one credit once to install a third eye. It's going to cost the runner one every time they go to HQ at least. <laughs> or it could have cost him one of those parasites. And he could have used one on the Draco maybe instead of on R&D. But he's got the R&D interface, so I guess he's going full on R&D. That's going to take, let's see, his data suckers at two. He could take out one of those ice now and then another one in the future. I uh, guess if he runs, he could run archives three times and then run R&D. Have five data suckers enough to kill both those ice once both parasites get their starting turn virus counters. So I think in this case you have to put something on archives. Uh, any kind of ice at all, really. Or else both your R&D ice are going to go away. Clearing virus counter, I don't think it's a good idea right now. No, it has to be mad. because of that, it's your hard as I said. No, because you play a sub game. That's not bad. I mean, it's 3 0. It's not insurmountable for NBN once an Azure Super is scored. Uh, but if it becomes 5 0, then it gets shaky. Big time shaky. And if those ice and RNG die, it will be 5 0 probably very quickly. Three account siphons. <laughs> Okay, instead <laughs> of... And then play Shaharazad, one Shaharazad's on the stack. Is it quick one off that? Ice up R&D instead. Quick one with all hard cards. Alright, so determine who loses half of their life. Over and over again. Over and over again. Over and over again. Too sweet. Then Ice R&D. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that Don't ice will get the job done. Somebody's going to be decked, and then be decked, be decked, be decked, be decked, be decked. Because he can run archives so once, run R&D. Really and if he gets through that ice, Eli is I done for. Someone's going to get decked. Yeah. Okay. Really and we all have 100 cards. <laughs> yeah. 
And, you know, when he runs archives, he gets the data sucker and Desperado. It's not bad. I didn't do the credits right there. You paid for You paid too much. You had to watch it. You had to watch it. You had to watch it. Well, there's an inside job in his hand. He could play the inside job to basically guarantee... Killing off. Okay, he just ran R&D to the toll booth. He lost three credits. Down to five credits. That shows just how good this MBN deck is to get, you know, siphoned three times and then only be at 3-0 at this point. Able to res a toll booth. Uh, the toll booth ended the run. That definitely protects the... Oh, yeah, you could use the data sucker tokens and the... Oh, and I guess he could have used data sucker tokens and the YAG to go through the toll booth. Oh, then he wouldn't have had data sucker tokens oh, with which to kill the Eli. <laughs> so he ended the run on the toll booth, then inside jobbed it using the data sucker tokens on the Eli. Hitting R and D. There we go. Yeah, if you use your data sucker tokens to just break the toll booth once, uh, then you'll be encountering the Eli. Crashing Ash as well. Down to one credit. Goodbye. <coughs> nice taxing, MVN. Nice taxing. <laughs> that tag's good. He's tagged 28 <laughs> credits away. So. Yeah, I, even I've with a Desperado on the table, yeah. even with Ice getting parasited very efficiently. But the corp yeah, itself has one yeah, credit remaining, yeah, so. Oh, yeah. Then marked accounts is nice and protected. I wonder why I never resed the pad camp anymore. That we know is there. Nice pop-up window in archives. At a time when both, uh, you know, he's got the Yog, but so he can get through it for free. But you know, he can't afford to let NBN start having money again. Well, he's got a security testing now. That's interesting. So the corp could trash it, but. That would cost two, a click and two credits, which is a big deal right now. Uh, also, if you let him try to use the security testing on archives, yeah. you're going to get a bunch of money, which is what you need, right? It's like let him security test archives with the pop-up window. The problem is the pad campaign. He security tests the pad campaign. He won't get data suckers doing that, but he will get three credits from Desperado and security testing as long as he tests the pad campaign server. Uh, and you yeah, won't be getting the pop up window over there. So, <laughs> so you know, maybe you don't trash that security testing immediately because you can't afford to right now, but in the near future. Mm. That toll booth is still in danger of being data suckered. There are three data sucker counters. Uh, he could easily, he's got three credits. He could run archives twice, let him have the two credits from pad campaign. Then run R&D, pay three, and get the Paris. Oh, he would need two more credits. He would have two more credits because running archives would get him Desperado credits, perhaps security testing credits. Uh, Yag, uh, break, yep. There's Right. Clone, oh, he's clone jibbing the parasite onto the toll booth. Uh, name security testing. Um, uh, name archives. At the end of the previous turn. Uh, run archives. Uh, run R&D. And then running archives a bunch. Running R&D. Hive. Very interesting <laughs> to play in the NBN deck. <laughs> He's at zero uh, points. Yeah, that hive is ridiculously st unfairly strong right now. And he's getting the job done for sure. His is EG minus hive. Oh, really? It's a high edition. I look pretty good here. And he's definitely getting the job done. Oh, right there. Well, now. With that hive there, um, unless, you know, the runner can get the agendas from R&D. <laughs> MBN should be able to fast advance uh, if he can just, you know, keep HQ safe. That Hive will definitely buy enough time to score an Astro or two. If he 
pulls this off. We're going to game 31. Yep, and the parasite goes back up to one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks to dirty laundry and f and friends and security testing that hasn't been trashed, the runner is back in some money. Yeah, it's rough to trash that security <laughs> test. Uh, I yeah. would have done it by now, <laughs> but <laughs> don't listen to me. I didn't make it to the elimination rounds at all. <laughs> and these two guys have, you know, played this matchup probably a hundred times by this tournament against each other, so they know each other well. I guess he knows that trashing the security <laughs> testing is the wrong idea. I guess when you have five credits, you know. And you <laughs> can't afford uh, yeah, I have all these to spend two. Oh, no, infiltration. That's also not as good as quality time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a paranoid, so got to infiltrate. Yes, he's just throwing out Mr. Lee. Just right in the garbage because uh, that's definitely going to get trashed if he plays it. Anybody see an aggressive secretary today? Nope. Anybody? See an aggressive secretary in any deck? Corp drawing a bunch of cards, icing up archives some more to stop the flow of data suckers, which were cleared. It's going to keep that toll booth around a little longer, but if the corp can get an HQ here, maybe when you drew all those cards, agendas appeared. And you don't have a sand sand or any way to score them right now, so. Even if you had a sand sand, you couldn't afford to use it right now. And there's a mimic. Sorry, Caduceus. He's checking his HQ ice like, oh, Quick is Mimic going to cut this ice down? <laughs> I hope it's another hive. How many credits do you have? Eight. I hope it's another hive. Credits. Oh, oh, eight. Eight. Yeah, eight. So I have five credits. Dracula, four. It okay. is another Draco. Uh, well, you got to make it. Strength four. Yep, he did make it strength four uh, against the mimics that the trace would fire. I guess he did tag and the run. Dirty laundry. I think that was a dirty laundry plus security testing on the pad campaign server. So. Need I remind you, this game started with two sweeps weeks against Andromeda, followed by three account cycles. And after 20 plus minutes, 20 ish minutes, uh, the score is 3 to 0. Checking those archives when you know every card. Well, you're checking the heap. When you know every card in your opponent's deck, uh, you know, looking at the heap is a lot stronger. They'll spend the money eventually. He's four. Okay. Yeah. I don't know spend it trash. Put two over on each I guess I didn't want to know that. He is. Trace. This really shows you the power of cooperation, right? If you, uh, you know, just want to win your local tournaments, you need to compete against the people near you. Up oh, went HQ, and sure enough, there were agendas that were drawn and were unable to be scored. But if you're going to go to regionals or world tournaments, then you need to cooperate with the people, you know, with your friends in your local area, work together with them. Right. Uh, and when you do, 
You'll be able to, you know, dominate people from other places. Uh, competing with other people who live near you. Actually, it's time to go traveling to other states or other countries. Uh, you will be in trouble. The problem is when they have a bunch of tags, it's like 50-50. These guys cooperated and with each other. Yeah. Training hard, like a team. And they really get to the finals of uh, people far and wide from, you know, miles away, drove in for hours to play against them. They were on top. But which one of them is better than the other? Wait, didn't you have two money last time? At one in the morning. Perhaps even two, I don't remember. The one who was lucky enough to draw two sweet sweet on turn one. Or the one who was lucky enough to draw three account siphons in an opening hand of nine cards. And then forgot to play his Desperado first. And forgot to discard a card after using the fourth click to run around. Is that Tobu's dead yet? One more turn. Not that you can get through the hive, but you maybe get inside job the hive. See two cards, which is a good idea when you're at five points, actually. I recommend that. That's a good play. See two cards from R&D that are unknown. You need to play two of them. Uh, when you're at five points, I will do that. Two credits and a card, yes. Uh, one credit and a card because... It's okay as a one-off in CI because if they float against you, you can play in archive memories. It's like Howard is happening. My deck is literally just designed to say, oh, you don't have the right breaker. So if I can clear all your board of breakers and drop like But you can, it's better to play like power step down in that situation. Uh, not it's for one card. I kind of like, so, you know, some people, they like to, instead of just cutting the opponent's cards, they shuffle them up. I kind of like that, and I think I want to start doing it. I hope no one's bothered when I start doing that. No, I want to go bad times, bad times, drop around, wrap around, wander. But to do that, they have to do it. And then they have to do it. If you want to HQ. Data yeah. sucker, mimic, yeah. mimic, mimic. The reason people don't play a lot of That's it. That is it. The Astro was there. It's over. The champion of Philadelphia. Dan. Congratulations, Dan. You will remember your trip to the Count Siphon for all time. And thankfully, I'm done with these videos. Stay tuned. World is soon. I'm not going. FFG live streams that, so you should watch that. Uh, Dan got it. I'll be producing more Netrunner content at some point in the future. I had a Sansan there, too. So, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Do you not run? Can you focus on? No.